join me in welcoming uh, Margaret Warner. Now, Margaret, I'm going to open with, uh, just because you've had so much recent coverage from, from Egypt and from, from North Africa more broadly, and give us a sense of your view of whether is this the Facebook revolution, the Twitter revolution, as some people say. What is the role of new media in it? The role of new media, I think, and Jane, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here and with your fabulous audience. So thank you. Uh, the, this is not just a Twitter revolution. I mean, it, it's a nice shorthand. It's, the role of the new media was huge, but it, it did not either cause the uprising or determine the outcome, but it enabled it. And so would we have had the revolution without these, this whole Arab Spring, as they still call that in the region, even though we've moved beyond spring, but oh, this series of uprisings, I, I still think it was going to happen eventually, but certainly I think uh, the way it crystallized and crystallized in so many countries, new media had a big role. Let's talk a little bit about how um, the internet is changing mainstream reporting. You know, no longer do you have kind of daily deadlines. Yeah. Now you've got hourly, hourly deadlines, deadlines that you can post all along. What is that doing to journalism? I think it's, it's less affecting me because I still have the luxury of having um, a few hours before going on our program to actually to do the research, to absorb it, to choose the guests, and to, and to actually reflect, thank goodness. But for print journalists, it's really become challenging because they have to be posting, and even at a place like the New York Times, not all the time, it's not turning into a wire service, but constantly filing updates. And um, that all takes time away from reporting. I, I can't tell you, I mean, it, actually, my office wanted me to do a blog for tomorrow. It's, um, it, it's an hour, an hour and a half that you aren't on the phone talking to somebody else who has a, an original experience with what you're trying to report on. You can't do everything. So, um, and that's another reason, in my view, to, to read the considered things, uh, not just the tweets. Um, because there are journalists who are under such pressure that they're filing things that really, then later they run corrections, and you, you just have to alert for that. But it has it, definitely had, I would say, in some level, in my view, a, a damaging effect on the quality of reporting. And the last questioner that, that I'll be able to get to is asking about Iran and asking what we should make of, of the most recent events there, uh, the, you know, the explosion that set back some of their, uh, their own research. Um, the killing of scientists. Um, no, there is, the Iranians believe, and I think there, uh, there's no doubt that that, plus the Stuxnet virus that set back there, there is clearly a major covert program going on. Prob I mean, the U.S. government neither confirms nor denies this, but involving Israel, the United States, and probably the U.K. And um, it's, it's sophisticated, and the whole question is, can they slow the program down enough and see if, if you eventually have some sort of regime change in Iran?